art haul. Hi friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Fiona and I'm a full-time artist. And on this channel, I like to take you with me on my artistic journey, whether that means working on projects here in my studio, going out to see cool art exhibits, or buying art supplies and sharing my haul with you, which is what we're going to do today. So last week, you might've seen last week's video, it was Prime Day, I did some online shopping. I wouldn't say it was like super duper successful, you can go back and watch that video if that's something you're interested in, it's kind of streaming style. But if you just wanna get into the good stuff, see what I actually did get, that's what's gonna be going on in this video. So I have a couple packages I ordered during Prime Day, and then I also have some stuff that was gifted to me, which is so nice. Um, so I wanna share that with you as well. So let's get into it. Let's open the first package here. I have a set of Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. Mm, that looks nice. Well, this is what it should look like if you do it correctly. I ripped it, whoops. But let's empty them out. Very nice. Here's the next thing that I bought. Comes in just a plastic case in here. And it's just this really adorable pencil case. Special, you are one in a million. Thanks. I didn't actually know it even had copy on it. There's the branding. And it just thought it was really sweet looking. And I got looped into buying it, so. Here's a pocket here for pens and pencils. And a pocket here where you can put pencil sharpener, some washi tape, any little stickers and things. And then the middle compartment, which once again, you can just throw anything in there. But I thought that was really cute. We'll try filling it with some stuff. All right, we have our next package. Let's open her up. Whoa, that came with a lot more than I thought it did. So yeah, a large set of pens here. It's a fine liner, here we go. 38 fine liner pens, um, vibrant and vivid, water-based, ideal for bullet journaling. Perfect for drawing lines and details. So I think this will be good for sketchbooking. Um, it has a 0.38 millimeter tip. So very, very fine. Um, but anyway, it also looks like it comes with some stencils, which is interesting. So we'll give those a shot too. All right, last package. So we have, oh, it came with two sets of brushes. I thought I was only getting one, so that's nice because these are really cheap brushes, but they'll be good for um, painting and glazing ceramics because I just go through brushes so quickly when I work on that stuff. I got the Paul Rubens watercolor uh, hot press paper set. It's 20 pages, 100% uh, cotton. And I'm excited to try this because many of you were commenting saying you can't go wrong with this. All right, so next are these acrylic paint pens. Um, writes on most surfaces, water resistant. They're a water-based acrylic, safe to use. Uh, you guys know I'm partial to my Posca. So just always willing to try out something new, especially if it's cheaper. Let's open these up and see what they look like. A pack within a pack. It does give you some instructions um, for use, so that's always good. And this is what they look like. Okay, and lastly, 
I have this paper, um, Arteza, the brand. I've never tried them before and I honestly haven't heard great things, but I was intrigued by the round paper and I want to give them a shot. Um, it also says that it's expert level, so I'm hoping it'll be pretty good quality. Let's check it out. Next item we have is this set of 12 piece of acrylic gouache. I have actually done this before in an unboxing video, um, but this was so kindly gifted to me by a subscriber and I'm not gonna call her out cause she's camera shy, but thank you so very much. It was so sweet of you. It was so nice of you to stop by my exhibition and then be so kind to bring me supplies. That was just so nice of you. The other thing she so kindly brought me are these golden open slow drying acrylics um, specifically for landscape. So this is something I definitely don't have. And it looks like we have some thinner here and several paint tubes. Of course, the most you have is white. So um, yeah, we're gonna take a closer look at this as well. Next, I have a few things that were gifted to me by my sister-in-law. Thanks, sis. So she got me these Artist Tile Set 75 Acid-Free Tiles, um, fine tooth surface, so. Yeah, we're gonna try playing around with some of the pens and paints we just got on these guys. She also got me this set and it comes with these canvas like pencil cases as well as a set of pens. So crafts for all 12 dual tip fabric markers. Um, so we'll open it. That's what these guys look like. And then it also comes with several large tote bags. So you can see here's more of the pencil cases. It comes with a lot. So you can see it's a very, very large tote bag. So, um, I'll step back and show you it on me so you can see that. And while we're at it, she also got me a tote bag, a canvas tote bag that has Girl with a Pearl earring and, and one with Van Gogh on it. <laughs> so those are just for my own use, which is really, really nice. And then these ones to draw on. Honestly, I think what I might do is save drawing on this stuff for a separate video, but we'll do a little test with the markers just so you guys can see. But um, I'm thinking of recording another video where I actually work on one of the tote bags. Um, let me know if you guys wanna see that. Anyway, now let's get into everything and take a closer look at all the supplies now that we've unboxed everything. Okay. So here is all the Prismacolors. and none of them are sharpened. So now I gotta do that.
Oh my gosh. Why does the last one keep breaking? There we go. Last one. Ah, uh, okay. That took a total of 12 minutes and 50 seconds. <sighs> but here they are. In all their gloriousness. Except this weird one, which was for some reason empty. I don't know why. There, there's nothing in here. There's no... There's, it's empty. So, anyway, let's swatch them. The first color is magenta. Hmm. So these are supposed to be hard lead, but honestly, they're so soft. It's just sort of a prismacolor quality that it just goes on so easily. It almost feels like a little waxy, especially when you're going over it, but it's such a nice feeling. And the colors are very, very vibrant. Nice. Let's do the rest of them. Prismacolor Verithin, colored pencils, artist quality, hard thin lead pencils, and yeah, I quite like the palette that's here. If I had to pick a favorite row, maybe it would be this one. I think the greens and purples are really interesting. Like there's a really good range of greens. Um, there's some nice yellows going on in here as well, very earthy. And then some of the pops of red, and then you guys know I love that millennial pink. Um, yeah, there's a lot of colors in here that I can see myself using. So I feel actually really happy about this purchase. So let's move on to the next. Next thing I had was this pencil case. So. I actually want to see if I can fit all those colored pencils into here and maybe what else I can fit. Let's do it. All right, let's open her up. So let's see how many of these I can fit in here. <laughs> it might, it might work. It might work. Yeah, I think it did. Wow, okay. So all 38 colored pencils fit in there very, very easily. And there's definitely plenty of room for more if I wanted to thicken that up. <laughs> it's funny, I actually have more um, colored pencils and they're the Prismacolor. So maybe I'll make this like my Prismacolor colored pencil case because that way I can condense some of it. Um, let me go grab those. Okay, here's my other Prismacolors. 
um, which I have done an unboxing of in a previous one. I think these were a part of my Black Friday haul. Um, but this throw these in here as well. There we go. <laughs> Will she close without them spilling out? Yep, they all fit. Yay! Now I have a special case just for my Prismacolor colored pencils and I can get rid of all the um, like three or four different cases I had, but yay! Special. You're one in a million pencil case. Although I have to say if I ever lost this, that would be uh, quite a bit of cash lost in <laughs> colored pencils. Um, and then what's great, since I know my colored pencils are kind of all in here, I'm going to throw my sharpener in here because I know I'll need that. So that'll definitely go in there. And then on this side, hmm, let's maybe see if we can just fit some pens there just to see. Let's put some of the... These are um, Stabilo pens. So we'll put some Stabilo in here. That looks cute. Well, I am very satisfied. All right, let's go on to the next item. All right, next for our swatching, we have these fine liner pens. So let's take a closer look at them. So it doesn't appear that they list the colors. So sorry about that, but let's take a look here. Yeah, it is a very fine tip. Let's take a look at it on paper. So that's, yeah, that's, that's good. Goes on smooth. Just do a quick, oh, that's actually really nice. It feels very comparative to Micron, but I do question whether it would fade over time in UV light. It doesn't say anything on the packaging about being light fast. So yeah, I would just, I would just be careful with it, you know? But in terms of drawing, like this would be great for sketchbooking. All right, let's swatch all of them. All right, and here we have the swatches for the fine liner pens. Honestly, I'm surprised, but I could definitely find myself using these. So I'm um, definitely gonna take them on my next travels and give them a shot in my sketchbook. As I said before, I don't know anything about the light fastness, so I'm not sure I would use them in art that I would sell, but for just playing around, um, I really like the color variety, the saturation of it, and the fine tip. So yeah. Maybe check those out if you're looking for that. The other thing we need to try out with them is the stencils. So let's take a look at that real quick. So it came with this two set of stencils. I'm not gonna sketch out all of them, but let's just try a few to see what we think.
There's just a little example of how the stencils look. They're actually pretty cute. So I think if you're into like stationery and stuff, it's, um, it's a nice little addition to this pack. All right, let's move on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing were these brushes. So let's open them and take a quick look. Um, so it's nice that I got two. I thought that I was only getting one. So this is what it looks like. Here's a brush guide. Choose the right brush to make art easier. We have a round, a flat, a filbert, a detail, a comb, and a glaze wash. So I mentioned that I was getting these to work on my ceramics. So what I'm going to do is pick one of them and do a little glaze test just to show you, um, as opposed to painting with all of them. Uh, I hope that's okay. If you are curious sort of about these different types of brush tips, uh, in previous hauls, I have definitely done tests with these and I will leave links to previous hauls below. But let's try one of the detail ones on a piece of mine that I need to glaze. like a good medium stroke on there. I do have more like fine detail ones, but I like to mix up my mark making. But yeah, just a little sample there of how the brushes are. Let's move on to the next thing. So first is this Paul Rubens watercolor. Uh, as you can see here, 100% cotton. 30 gram hot press, and there's 20 pages. Let's open it and look. I wonder if this can slide off or if I'm just gonna have to rip it. Oh, there we go. I always love these little bands that keep it together. Um, but yeah, open it. There's some nice embossing here. And the leather cover's really nice. What I wonder is, like, once the block is used, like, is this even usable for anything? Um, the way that it looks like it's bound, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, it also looks like it's a little damaged. So, like, this black paper has rubbed off on this first page, which is a shame. Um, but as you can see, it's held together with wax here and here you can see it a bit better. So what you do when you want each individual sheet is you just take an X-Acto and cut along that edge to free it after you're done working on it. Um, but I think, um, the paper quality itself feels very nice, extremely soft. Like, I could see what people mean by it being 100% cotton. People were talking to me about that. But yeah, I like it quite a bit, um, the feeling of it at least. And I'm excited to work with it. Like I said, it's a shame it's damaged, but that's what Prime Day will get you sometimes. So let's take a look at the next paper. Okay, next we have this 20 sheet of round paper. If you hear little footsteps and a toy in the background, that is my dog who uh, has joined me up here. Hopefully she won't be too loud. I apologize if she is. All right, so we've opened this. The cover comes right off and we have a wax coating around here. Zelda really wants to be a part of this video. Come on, Henny. You need to relax. So, where was I? 
Right, okay, so when you open it, the cover comes right off. There's a wax coating, so it's a similar block to the Paul Rubens we just looked at. Um, once again, it looks like the first page is damaged, so that's a shame, but overall it feels very soft. There's more of a tooth to this one because this one is cold press, whereas the Paul Rubens one was hot press, so it was smoother. And yeah, I'm excited to try this format out. I've never done circular paper before. And lastly, we have the 75 acid-free tiles. Um, and this is, um, has a fine tooth surface. It doesn't say here whether it's hot press or cold press, um, but it says it's good for wet and dry media. So let's open it and take a look. All right, so once this slips off here, it's just a bunch of loose sheets. Um, the weight of it's quite good. It's very, very, very smooth. So if you're drawing on this, it'll be a fast surface. There's essentially no tooth to it at all. Um, and they're kind of almost in this like post-it note format. Um, just feeling it out. I'm not sure I would use this to sell work on, but it could be good for sort of, if I'm trying to like do parts of a painting perhaps if I did it and I'm laying it out and trying to almost collage it on um, for concepting. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. But there's quite a few of them. I've got 75 here. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Okay, next we have these paint markers to try out. So let's swatch them. Here's the instructions. So it just tells you to take it off, shake it, and then you have to pump the tip to get the ink filled. So let's do that. Here it also tells you shake, vent, press, right. Shake well before every use with the cap on. Press the tip several times until ink flows. Recap tightly after use. Harmful if swallowed, yes, I would think so. Um, and here's a little close up of the branding. I'm not familiar with them, but it has an extra fine point. Let's see about that. Yeah, it does actually. I don't think it's as small as the Posca that I have, but let's uh, shake it up. I'll try pumping the tip here. Oh, it comes out pretty quick. That's good. Sometimes with the Posca, it takes a long time. So let's try writing with it. Oh yeah, that's a very fine tip. That's nice. Let's watch it. Ah, oh, that's good. I mean, so with a lot of these paint markers now, you can get replaceable nibs and they're sort of like a cloth nib, I would say. This definitely feels plastic to me. Um, but regardless, the flow is good. I can say that. All right, let's watch the rest of them. So just wanna quickly say that given how hard this nib is, I wouldn't recommend it for on canvas. I can already tell that it would like sort of scratch and spray. You know, I'm not too in love with the palette. There's something about it that it feels like some stuff is missing. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like the greens, the blues, the purples, like the colors are very close in saturation. And then um, there isn't just, there's not a lot of variety. Like, I don't know how to describe it. I guess the values are not that different. So uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. And then it's just, is it's very, very scratchy. Like you can see even with the red, how it kind of splintered off there. Um, so if you're drawing with anything with a surface, this is just gonna spray. So I think I'll be sticking with my Posca markers, but hey, it's always fun to try something new. So. Let's go to the next. Okay, next we have these slow drying acrylic paints. So let's open them up and swatch them. So 
here's the thinner. Um, so you use thinner to adjust and maintain working properties of the colors and reduce brush drag. So um, you don't want to add more than 25% because um, that'll weaken the paint. But that's what that is. And then we have several different colors. We have green, blue, an ultramarine blue, a crimson, a bright red, yellow, a brighter yellow, and then white. So it gives you an instruction manual here. Um, it tells you more about slow drying acrylics. And it gives you a color chart with all of the colors, which is nice. Um, and then just tells you more about the line of paints. So let's swatch them for real now. the palette and we're gonna play with it a bit gotta go for red first you know yeah they're more of a medium bodied acrylic I would say which I think is what probably helps it stay movable I like that green as well. All right, so here's our palette, and it's nice, actually. I quite like it. Um, 
it's definitely a medium bodied paint. It's not heavy bodied at all. And you can get almost a nice watercolor quality to it when you mix it with the water or the thinner. Um, but yeah, something to definitely experiment more with that is out of my comfort zone. I'm used to very fast drying acrylics. Let's see if it's actually, this is the first one I did. Oh yeah, still wet. So normal acrylic would be dry by now, but um, yeah, I'll leave a link to that below if you guys also wanna experiment with it. Let's go to the final thing. Crafts for all fabric markers. As I said, I would like to do a separate video on this, but we're just gonna do a quick swatch test on one of the little pencil cases. So let's try it out. All right, so here is one of the little pencil cases and here are all the markers. So these look a bit different from previous fabric markers I've tried. These look more like sort of alcohol-based markers. Um, it gives you the color and you have to a dual tip here. So this is the fine tip and then you have a wider tip as I get it on myself. <laughs> broad tip. So fine tip and a broad tip. But that's, let's try it out. So yeah, my immediate impression is it's similar to other fabric markers I've tried where you get a very heavy bleed. Let's try the fine tip and see if it's any better. Like if I wanna draw a circle. So yeah, it's not coming out super clear. I'm somebody in my work, I like things to be very crisp and clear. And I think that's why I've never really quite found a good fabric marker match. Like I guess you have to go over this quite heavily to get that mark and then I'm kind of, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe, maybe, focus, hello. Um, but some of that fabric is coming off on the tip. Um, but anyway, this is good to do this test because it'll determine if I even want to do a whole video on it because I had done one before and then I was unsatisfied with the outcome and I never posted it. And so <laughs> this might save me the trouble of doing that. The green came out quite nice. The purple, I'm having the same issue of the bleed. Let's just go through and finish the rest of these. They are very nice to hold in your hand, at least, because they're quite substantial. Um, yeah, very, very scratchy. And just on this fabric surface, you're not going to get it to be very smooth, perhaps something besides canvas. But I can't imagine drawing on all of those totes and having to go over it over and over again. It would probably be a preference to do a screen print instead to get that quality that I'm after. But if you're somebody who likes, you know, something that'll be a bit rougher around the edges, then this might be good for you. Or if any of you draw on fabric quite often and have any tips for me, I would love to hear them since this is not my area of expertise at all. <laughs> I guess the other thing I could do since they're technically canvas is I could paint them. Um, that's an option, but so far I think it's too, too much of a tooth on the canvas for me to do the type of work that I like to do, but that's, that's the palette there. So it's a shame the palette's nice, but it would be quite a bit of effort to get that crisp quality I am after, but hey, can always play with it and have fun with it in my free time. Well guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Uh, comment below and let me know if there's anything that you would want to try out here. In case you're interested, I'm going to leave some links in the description to as many things as I can. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay well and stay inspired, my friends. Bye.